When Linux 1.0 was released to the world almost 25 years ago, its model of free and open source software knocked down all of the walls that had previously been put in place by proprietary software giants like Microsoft in order to maintain control over the development and distribution of computer programs. And as was said, in a world without walls, who needs windows and gates? When using Windows, its high degree of compatibility makes it fine for everyday use for many people, especially gamers. But since Windows is a proprietary operating system, developers and users more or less have to work within a relatively closed software environment. That places certain restrictions on what you can do. Anyone who has dealt with Windows Update or Microsoft DRM features knows what I mean. Linux, on the other hand, has a completely open source kernel, the central part of the operating system that links your hardware with applications, meaning that it can be used freely for a purpose of whatever you want, for tons of different use case scenarios, etc. These different versions of Linux are commonly called distributions or distros which provide different stacks of software, tools, and desktop environments, all of which are tied to the Linux kernel that combine to form a complete operating system. These distros can range from anything like Ubuntu or Mint, which are popular desktop distributions often used as alternatives to Windows, to something like Android on your smartphone, to versions of Linux found on supercomputers. Linux's focus on security and stability compared to Windows, which focuses more on ease of use, has made Linux extremely popular for servers and other super critical applications. Linux is also generally more lightweight and less resource heavy than Windows, which is beneficial for home users who just want a very fast computing experience on a possibly low-end machine, and even professionals running servers that require high efficiency as they can pick a distro tailored for them by being very light on stuff like eye candy and background processes, even to the point of being just a command line interface. And while that all sounds great, that doesn't mean that it's a great idea to just run home and migrate your home PC from Windows to Linux. Although a lot of work has gone into making desktop Linux distributions more user-friendly over the last 10 years, there's still a sh pretty sharp learning curve if you've never used Linux before. Linux offers a lot more granular control over your computer than something like Windows or Mac OS, which actually does share a common ancestor with Linux, being Unix, but that's maybe something for a different day. Taking advantage of this granular control often requires a fair amount of technical knowledge. Even if you're running a simple system like something like a Raspberry Pi, it can still be rather complicated. And even distros that place a greater emphasis on ease of use do take some getting used to if all you've ever known is Windows or Mac. For example, most software isn't downloaded through a web browser and installed through an exe file like as it is in Windows but instead goes through a package manager, which downloads software from large repositories specific to each distribution, kind of like an app store on your phone. That might sound a little bit restrictive compared to the open nature of searching for Windows software on the web. There's actually a wide variety of applications available through these package managers and tons of these are free programs, continuing the Linux tradition of using open source code. But what if you want to game? This can admittedly be a challenge for a number of titles requiring you to run a Windows compatibility layer such as Wine, uh, to, even to get them to work at all. But the good news is that Steam now features over 1,000 games that work on Linux just fine, and the new Steam OS is Linux-based as well. So if trying to master the challenges that Linux presents in order to tap into its potential sounds like something that you want to do, check out some of the numerous free resources available online, like Linux Newbie Guide, to get additional technical info and figure out exactly how you'd like to customize it. But if that sounds a little bit overwhelming and you're mostly drawn to Linux because of its infinitely cute penguin mascot Tux, you can download the completely open source sewing patterns to make your own own Tux plushie, and even though they've been in alpha since I believe 2004, you don't have to worry about recompiling the kernel in order to do it. 
Another thing you don't have to compile the kernel to do is Dollar Shave Club. Get razors and other bathroom supplies shipped directly to your door for only a few bucks a month. You can get Dr. Carver's Shave Butter, One Wipe Charlie's, Post Shave Moisturizer, travel sizes for like all of these things, and a variety of shavers up to the six blade executive. So no need for vibrating handles or none of that nonsense as you probably know. Just some high quality razors and other various bathroom supplies like butt wipes sent directly to your door. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus and sign up if you are in the US, Canada, or Australia. Thank you guys for watching. If you like recompiling kernels and doing all that nerdy stuff, press the like button. If you don't like doing that kind of stuff, press the like button. If you dislike this video, press the dislike button. If you want to see more of these videos, press the subscribe button. If you want to see funny videos that don't make you think so much, click the button on my face. It's literally anywhere on the screen. It's the easiest one you could possibly press. And I'll see you guys next time.